I've come to Mazda's design studio here in Frankfurt to see a secret new electric car. Could it be the long-awaited MX-5 EV? Uh, no, it's this, the 6E. Now, before you switch off, it has got some interesting design features. And also, it's made me realise there's a guaranteed way to win on the horses. So, if you want to see that, keep watching. And to learn more betting tips, please subscribe and like the channel. Do you want to hear how to win bets like Mazda? Well, it's simple. Rather than risk everything on one horse, all you need to do is place bets on all of the runners. That way you're guaranteed a win. Genius, eh? For Mazda, it means the company has every base covered rather than choose one type of technology. So it makes petrols, diesels, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and even range extenders. It's even plowing ahead with two types of petrol engine, piston and rotary. That way, I suppose it can't lose, although I guess there are fights in the R&D canteen every lunchtime. This new 6 will be available with pure electric, plug-in hybrid and range extender powertrains, although only the EV is confirmed for the UK at the moment. To help spread the cost of its bets, the 6E is made in collaboration with a Chinese company called Chang'an, who calls its version the Deepal SL03. I guess 6E sounds a bit more, um, sexy? Let's have a closer look at the interesting bits. Starting at the front, you've got the normal Mazda grille, but of course it's filled in because it's an electric car. And you see these lights? They do the normal things when you come and unlock the car, but also they show you the charge level. So when you plug in, these flash and show you like, like you'd look on your phone to see the level. Now, that might be quite nice and quite flash to show off once, but I'm not sure I'd want it at midnight outside my house flashing all the time. Under the huge body, you've got a really decent frunk as well. Now that's 70 litres, which is almost as big as a Tesla Model 3's, but that's going to be handy and there's much more space in there than just for your cables. Also, one weird thing, look at this wiper arm. It's huge. It's engineering, I suppose. 4.9 metres long, this car. There's interesting sculpted side bits here, but it's at the back where I think this car looks really interesting. So do you see here, this bit, pokes out a bit. Now, it looks as though this is actually sticking out a bit more than the bottom of the bumper, but I've used some science. It's not quite, it's at about the same level. However, I have a worry here. If you reverse into a post or somebody reverses into you, then this is gonna be the bit that gets damaged first. Now, as any Tesla Model Y owner will tell you, that's gonna get really expensive. But it does look nice, and I'm sure it does something from the aerodynamics. Oh, and this here is a spoiler that pops up at 56 miles an hour. Now, it's a hatchback. Now, it did look a bit like a saloon, I thought, but no, it's a proper hatchback, so it's nice and practical. Now, the boot looks like a decent family-sized car in here. The figures say it's 330 litres. Now, that's the same as a Volkswagen ID3. Now, I don't believe them. I think it's got to be more than that. Look, it's quite a deep space. I suppose it's a little bit shallow, especially if you've got a dog or something, but I think that looks bigger than they're saying. The inside is where this car gets a bit more interesting. There are a few really nice touches like this. Frameless doors. I mean, that's kind of what you expect to see in like a sporty coupe, but here they are on a sort of family hatchback. Now that's quite complicated and expensive to do, I think. So I really like the fact they've done it. Then in here, this is quite a special place to be. It's much better than you'd expect. I mean, I've just come back from the Audi A6 launch and I think it's nicer in here than it is. And that's a hundred thousand pound car, the Audi. First of all, you've got this sort of suede material, which feels like the slippers I got for Christmas, but looks really nice and is different to what you get everywhere else. There's a Sony branded sound system too. Then there's a 14 and a half inch screen, which isn't the biggest in the world, but that's perfectly big enough for me and seems to have a lot of the buttons you'd expect uh, to use every day. Another screen in front and a head up display with augmented reality, which uh, seems to work pretty well too. Also, this huge sunroof, which will be standard on every car in the UK, and then a really light, airy feel. And there's just materials that feel top class, really. There's metal feeling electric window switches, for example. And these seats look really sporty and like something you might see in a Bentley. I really like it in here. There's the odd bit of 
cheaper plastic, I suppose, but it still feels much better quality than you'd expect in this class. Space, well, yeah, it's fine in the front, loads of, uh, loads of headroom and legroom, and this gives a nice cosy feel as well, and there's lots of places to put things. The 14.6 inch screen might not have many buttons, but it does have gesture control, which seems like an excellent new way to humiliate yourself in front of your passengers. So, for example, if you're giving it a V sign, it will answer an incoming phone call. Putting your fingers on your lips like a nursery school teacher will mute the music, or giving a thumbs up will like a song on your playlist. We've yet to try this, but we suspect hilarity will ensue. There's an augmented reality head-up display too, with arrows for the sat-nav overlaid over the road so you can see it out the windscreen. And there's even a snow mode which makes the graphics blue instead of white so you can see them in wintry weather. In the back, plenty of space as well. You've got those frameless doors again and some really thick glass, which I reckon it means it's going to be quite refined in here when you're on the move. The materials don't get a downgrade just because in the back either. Loads of knee room, just about enough headroom, I suppose. That's probably the reason they've got the glass rim is because it gives you another couple of inches there. I think if you're bigger than six foot, you might struggle. Seats are comfortable enough and the floor's raised because it's got the battery underneath there, but it's, it's not that uncomfortable. Maybe just lacking a bit of support here, but I don't think people are gonna have too many complaints. I've now been handed the press kit so I can tell you some of the figures too. The basic standard range model has a 258 horsepower motor powering the back wheels and it's wired to a 68.9 kilowatt hour LFP battery which gives a range of 310 miles. That's respectable but not exceptional although the efficiency of 4.499 miles per kilowatt hour is impressive. The 200 kilowatt charging peak is at the higher end for this type of car too, but an 11 kilowatt AC figure is disappointing. We really like 22 kilowatt. There's a longer range model, but the figures are a bit odd. It uses a lithium ion battery with a 80 kilowatt hour capacity, which gives a 345 mile range. But you have to sacrifice a few horsepower as it only has 244. That's most unusual, as most electric cars have more power on the bigger battery models. Mazda told me it's because the LFP battery, which has a different chemistry, can supply more power without risk of overheating. With its less power and performance and slower charging speed, you have to really need those extra 35 miles of range to make it worthwhile choosing the long range car, especially as it's going to be more expensive too. Mazda promises that Mazda DNA that you get from cars like the MX-5 will come across in the driving experience, helped by a comparatively low weight on the 6E. So would you bet on the Mazda 6E? Well, it's a perfectly competent car. It's good looking, especially inside, and the figures kind of add up. But you're going to have a lot of time to think about it because it's not coming into the UK until 2026. By then, I'm a little worried that it might be a little outdated. The market's moving so quickly that is this going to still look modern and fresh in a couple of years' time? I'm not sure. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you.